guys and welcome to another video and uh, now we're gonna go global with the uh, localization package and uh, I've been making this video game called Line War. We spent about 18,000 hours I think on it. It's not sold quite as many uh, copies as we'd like to do and I think I know what it is because people don't understand the menu. They don't have a clue what they're reading so how are they gonna be able to play the game? Well, well I think we're actually working on adding single player to the game now because I think that's the key factor. But why not add localization? I think that's going to make uh, wonders. And to test this out, I'm actually going to implement localization into Ultranova because this is my uh, little uh, hobby project now. Ultranova, cool platformer. You should wishlist it on Steam because it's going to be there pretty soon. Um, doing uh, tremendous, wonderful steps forward on this game. I'm having a lot of fun as well. And I'm sharing my thoughts and my learnings and my findings. Learnings, is that even a word? I'm sharing that as we go along and we're going to create some cool stuff. I've never tried localization before and my younger self, less pretty and less wise, would have dove straight into this uh, and just created a little C-sharp string replacement thing and started my own little uh, package to localize things. But hey, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, remember, from last video? So I'm going to use the localization package because Unity has created a thing for this very thing and probably poured thousands of hours into this making it a lot better than I would have made it. So why not use the package and make use out of it? I think that's what we're going to do. So I added the localization package from the package manager into my Ultranova project and uh, I dove straight into it. My brain doesn't like to uh, to read manuals. I'm a man. <laughs> so uh, I started to just play around with it. And then I wandered through the menus uh, mindlessly and couldn't find anything. So I sort of sneak peeked a little bit at the documentation after all. And then maybe I looked a little bit more at it, but not tremendously much, but I did look at it. The localization package actually uses localization tables with keys. So pretty much like I would have done it, but they've just done it a lot better. With these keys, you can look up other language phrases in the table, or you can even localize other assets like uh, images or audio clips and things like that. I'm only looking at the text uh, part of this right now. So that's what I'll be focused on in this video. And then I spotted something magical. There is a Google spreadsheet uh, service implemented with this. And do you know what? I was thinking this is the path. I'm going to go forward. Well, I know some languages myself. I know English, Swedish, and bull. And then I thought, I've got a Discord server. Loads of people in there, friendly, but I'm a little bit scared to talk to people. But they know other languages. They, they, they know how to speak in their own language. Maybe they can help me. But I'm too much of a chicken to ask straight away. So I actually thought of a different solution first before I build up the guts here to ask people of help. I don't like to ask people for help. And then it hit me. Hey, Google. There is a translation service that you have. You probably built that into your spreadsheet service. And sure enough, they did. And I found that if you type this little formula in, you can actually grab the headers from the auto-generated text or the headers that the localization package has done for the languages that you added. And it takes the language code from within the little brackets at the end, and then it extracts that and translates into that language. So my English column is my master column. If you can use words like master anymore. So I've got the master column and it automatically, magically translates into the other languages. Beautiful. It's probably not perfect. Not perfect. If I had a cat, I'd stroke it. It's not that perfect. But I think it's good enough for the purpose of actually getting to the point where people would understand the game good enough. And then as I build up the courage to get some help from some peers or other people, humans in that matter, then uh, they can actually help me maybe translate it into some something better. But I think this is going to be a great start. So... That's what I'm going to be using. When you write the formula, remember to put a dollar sign before the actual number, because before the number one har, here, 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 here. I don't see, I'm speaking Swedish. I know all the languages. So uh, before the one here at the end, put a dollar sign, because then it will automatically, you can copy this and fill this formula down, and it'll keep the extracting it from the header row, because you don't want to have it starting to try to find the language code from a previous phrase in that language. Makes no, no sense. So put a dollar sign there, and it'll just force itself to use the header row every time. The Chinese uh, language didn't have a two-letter code for it. I'm using the simplified one, so I'll uh, I just modify that cell a little bit manually. You could have probably come up with a generic uh, formula that would work for all of them, but Hey, I just customized it. So I pulled the localization spreadsheet back into Unity and I pressed play. And in the top right corner, you get a little drop down so you can actually test the different languages that you have added support for. And it worked great out of the box, but mainly for the languages that uses the standard ASCII characters. Uh, that's what the, the default font asset that I built with TextMesh Pro supports. It doesn't work good. It just replaces all the stuff that uses symbolic languages or Eastern European or Cyrillic or uh, Greek languages and stuff like that. It doesn't support that out of the box. So we're going to be covering that right now. But it looks pretty good from the start. All the stuff that uses the Latin basic standard ASCII set 
worked great. I'm actually switching over to a lot of the new stuff, uh, the new ways of working in Unity as well. I've been fighting it for some time, but it's time to bite the bullet and get started. And with that comes dropping the old legacy font system or the text mesh stuff behind me, and I'm gonna use text mesh pro instead. I hate that name though, because uh, they bought the asset. It was a good asset name, text mesh pro sound pretty cool, but when you buy it and integrate it into a game engine, it feels like you shouldn't really have that name anymore. Preferably not having a prefix of TMP underscore as well. It doesn't feel like it's part of the native en engine. Well, ever. Never mind, that's just a side note. So anyway, when you build a standard font asset, you probably won't have the support in TextMesh Pro font assets for the acrylic languages, the extended Latin language that, for example, Polish uses, and some of the other Eastern European languages, and it won't have the symbolic languages like Chinese, Thai, uh, Japanese, Korean, and those. So we have to figure out a way to do that. Okay, so how am I gonna get this to work with TextMesh Pro then? And here's the workflow that I came up with. I'll probably improve it over time, but I'll share what I've got so far. And as an indie developer, I like cheap or even free stuff. So Google Fonts is my go-to now to get fonts for my games. They're allowed to be used in games. Uh, so, hey, great. And uh, they have a lot of fonts to choose from. And uh, normally I probably wanna go for a flashy display font of some sort, but I'm gonna go for a more a font that has support for a lot of different languages now. And uh, after some searching, I found that the Noto font, uh, and I like the Sans version without the little extra lines on it. So I wanted to go for that one because it has a really wide character coverage. So that would be a good one to go for. And uh, as I learned later on, you don't necessarily need to use the same font. So you could have for English language, for example, you can have a display font that you like the look of, and you can actually use other fonts for the other symbolic languages if you want. But for now, just for simplicity, I'll share how I did it with the Noto font. Unfortunately, there's no magic way to get this to work and generate all the font assets for TextMesh Pro that you'd uh, hope for. And I ended up not using some of the fonts that I originally downloaded, like Arabic, for example, Arabic, Arabic, um, and other left to right languages that also require the words to be connected or the, the scripting. Otherwise, it might have a different meaning and stuff. I don't know enough about that. So I had to cut some of those languages out because I couldn't get them to work properly. But what I did end up go for is a list of, uh, I downloaded the Noto Sans fonts called Noto Sans Bold. Uh, I got the Noto Sans JP, which is the Japanese, the KR for Korean, SC for simplified Chinese, the Thai and the Hu uh, Hebrew, 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 Hebrew uh, fonts. And for that one, I got the Serif apparently instead of the Sans, don't know why. So I imported these fonts into Unity and then I went to Window TextMesh Pro Font Asset Creator. And then I set the sample point size to auto sizing. I set padding to eight, packing method to optimum because it doesn't take that much extra time to generate it. Atlas resolution I set to 1024 by 1024 and character set I set to extended ASCII. And then I clicked to generate the font atlas. And note now that when it generated, it, it said that it created it with a point size of 76 in the result. And you manually need to use this value when you create the other font assets and also the padding value should be the same. So then you get a consistent quality look of all the different fonts that you have. I ended up uh, writing those figures down and uh, I think I stuck to point size 80 and a padding of eight. So if the ratio is one to 10 for the padding, then uh, I, I think that should be good enough. The reason why you don't wanna reduce the padding too much, if you have too low of a padding, then when you shrink the fonts, you'll get some artifacts and some white boxes around your letters that you don't want. I think a rule of thumb from what I see is that if you keep the padding to a tenth of the point size, then you should be good. Then I click to save the font and I just use the default name. And here comes the trick to get the other languages to work. So I use the font generator again, and this time with one of the symbolic languages like Chinese. I set the sampling point size to 76 and padding to eight for the consistent look. And then for the character set, it's not feasible to generate all the different Chinese uh, symbols. Even if it's simplified, uh, I think it's way too many still. So it's not feasible to generate all of those. So instead, I actually end up using my spreadsheet and I just mark the column. I select all of the Chinese characters there. And then when I go to the font creator, I copy that column, I paste it into the custom characters option. The problem is that you have to come back and do this as you update your UI. So that's a bit of a pain. And then I repeated this for the other symbolic languages. I did it for Japanese, Korean, Thai, and Hebrew. Hebrew, like Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew that, hey bro, I don't know. But we also need the acrylic, the Greek, and the extended Latin letters. And these are included in the original uh, Noto Sans font, but we still need to generate those. And I created three additional assets for these different character sets. And I found also through some, uh, just some Googling and in the Unity forums, for example, there's a lot of posts about this. And I found that these are the character ranges that works well for, uh, to cover most of those letters. Hopefully I've got them all there. That's uh, needed. So in the end, I ended up with a whole bunch of font assets that I generated with the same consistent point size of 
roughly about 80 points and uh, also the padding to eight, which is the 10th of the point size. And I ended up with these font assets, the Noto Sans Bold SDF, the Noto Sans Bold SDF Acrylic, uh, Greek, Latin Extended A, the JP for Japanese, KR for Korean, SC for Simplified Chinese, Thai and Hebrew. Ah, I said it, <laughs> those fonts. But here's the thing, as you create a font asset or a text object in your game UI, you can only select one of the fonts. So I ended up creating a master font, which is the original uh, Noto Sans Bold SDF font. So that's the one I pick on the text object to display it. But here's the trick now. Go to the project folder and locate that base font that you used. In my case, it was the Noto Sans Dash Bold SDF font. So click on that in the project folder and in the inspector, scroll back to fallback font assets. And then here you just add all the other fonts that you created in the fallback list. Now, when the UI tries to display the text in a different language, it'll notice, okay, I won't find it in the original font asset. And then it'll just look through the fallbacks and it does this fast and uh, it'll just pick the characters from uh, when it hits that one. So eventually it'll come to the language that was set and it'll be able to display that font correctly. And this is how you could actually use different type of fonts as well. You don't have to have that consistent font. I decided to go for Noto for all of them, but I could have had, had a totally different font for my English and maybe the Latin or acrylic language. And then I could have uh, had totally different fonts altogether for the symbolic languages. That would work great using this method. So my conclusion so far is that this works pretty good. It looks great. It works good. Localization works along with the text assets really nice, but I don't like the fact that it's a repetitive and manual process where you have to actually update the character sets, regenerate the font atlases. I've always been a bit allergic to anything that requires repetitive or manual work. Don't like it. <laughs> so I wish that could change a little bit, but I think for my purpose, I'll make sure the game UI is built up. I'll do some random testing every now and then, and then gradually, maybe once every week or every month or something like that, well, I'm actually going to go fast on this, so it'll be quite rapid, I'm telling you. And also, I should mention that when you localize the Text Mesh Pro text in your game, you select the Text, text Mesh Pro asset in your hierarchy view, and in the inspector, right click on the Text Mesh Pro dash text within brackets UI name for that component and select localize. And then you select the table collection and then you browse to the string reference that you want to replace it with. And this assumes that you've created the table and also defined the string reference and added the translation to begin with. So I haven't gone through that in too much detail. And as I learned this a little bit better, I can probably create a step-by-step -step tutorial taking you through everything uh, without rambling too much. That'd be better. <laughs> So localizing dropdowns, for example, that takes a little bit of extra work, especially dropdowns that you've dynamically populated by generating the different options. For example, in my UI, I've got this dropdown to change uh, the full screen size or between windowed and full screen. And I pull that out of the enums that are in the game. And then I actually need to create some code so I localize that information in my dropdown system. So that takes a little bit of extra work and this is event driven as well. So when a localization dropdown is changed in your menu, for example, then an event is sent out to all the text objects so they need to update and you need to subscribe to these C sharp events and update the text, otherwise they won't change. And I know that events can be tricky to get your head around, me included. <laughs> so it'll take some practice and hopefully I'll be able to create that step-by-step -step tutorial and, and get you through everything, uh, including these little bit more tricky scenarios. Because when the event is fired, that the language has been changed, then it needs to have a script in that case that updates this uh, to display it on the screen. If you've done it in the inspector, if you create a static menu, then you should be fine. But if you have the dynamic dropdowns like I've created here, then you need to, uh, to dive into the scripting and get this uh, to work a little bit. The reason why it's event driven is for pure performance reasons. Uh, it would uh, not be feasible to actually have an update the loop that always checked, is there, any, is there a change, is there a change, is there a change? So you want your game to run better, so it's worth it to run the events for this. All right, so as I get more comfortable with this, I should be able to create a step-by-step -step tutorial to get the localization work, to get the table set up, to get the auto translation, and also get, to get the fallback fonts and everything in place. I just wanted to share this with you straight away. Since I'm developing Ultra Nova now, I want to be able to share everything that I can and uh, not postpone it. I've been postponing way too many things, so I might as well get this out there. Hopefully you'll find some benefits. And if you find some, uh, some use out of this video, please consider wishlisting Ultra Nova on Steam. Head over there, click the wishlist button because that'll pour some extra slurp juice into the machinery of the algorithm on Steam and it's going to promote this game amazingly. So when it's approaching release, it's going to pop up for random people and they're going to be go, hey, I want to play this game. And also, of course, only wishlist it if you want to buy it, if you want to play it. That's uh, a key thing, of course. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got a Patreon page, patreon.com slash infancia. You can head over there and also support me there. You get a lot of game dev stuff and uh, Unity project files and stuff that I add. And uh, until next time, have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye for now. My name is Nova, an advanced cyborg designed for deep space exploration and interstellar missions. Equipped with the latest technologies and weaponry, I have been sent to the planet Neo-Terra to investigate an anomaly in the system. During my descent, my ship was hit by a fierce storm, and I crashed on the planet's surface. Now I must find a way to repair my...